Sábado, happy Sabbath to everybody. Sábado. Amen. Happy to be here in the house of the Lord. Let's shout to say amen. 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 We, uh, we are to praise God with everything that we have, with our heart, mind, soul, and body. Amen. Hay que darle gloria y honra a Dios. Porque se lo merece. Amen. We are here at Christian Lighthouse Church, and I want to welcome everybody. Feel comfortable. Make yourself at home. We are family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Somos hermanos y hermanas en Cristo. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, we, if this is your first time here, uh, we invite you to keep coming and um, invite others to come. Uh, we're starting a children's church today. So, um, Vanessa will be conducting the children's church downstairs, and uh, she has some prizes for the kids as well. So, invite others to come and join us. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. Thank you for this Sabbath day. Dios, te damos gracias por este santo sábado. We give you praise and worship, Lord. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We bring our hearts before you, Lord, and we ask that you pierce into our hearts and you speak to our minds, Lord. We come humbly before you. Venimos antes de ti, Dios, para darte nuestro corazón. And we ask that you uh, send your Holy Spirit, Lord, that this service will be done according to your will Amen. and everything to honor you, Lord. Amen. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sábado. Let's try that again. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sábado. We're going to learn two languages today, right? <laughs> be, I'm happy to be here in the house of the Lord, and I'm happy to see your faces here today. Um, God is amazing. It brings me joy to see other brothers and sisters in Christ coming together on the Sabbath day to praise God. Amen. Para adorar a Dios y enseñarle que, que lo amamos, ¿verdad? Dios es todopoderoso y nosotros nomás somos la creación de Él. We're His creation, amen? Brother Tate? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'd like to see Brother Tate's a dedicated uh, uh, member. He comes here all the time and he's always here and excited. He's the first one here. I'm like, man, he, sometimes he beats us here to church. <laughs> but it's amazing. At this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, collect the uh, tithes and offerings. I'm going to have Vanessa uh, pass the tray around. And if you have anything to give, that's great. We use it. Um, we're going to try to use the money that, uh, that has been raised to... We're now doing children's church. So we went and bought a few things for the children's church. And... Um, so we're happy to announce that right after Children's Story, uh, Vanessa's going to be doing a Children's Church downstairs, and uh, she'll have a little, um, some gifts for the kids, and some activities to do with the kids, but she also is going to teach them out of the Bible, Bible lessons. It's not just going to be, um, it's not just going to be activities, it's not just going to be um, gifts and stuff. But it's also going to be uh, learning the Word of God. How many of y'all believe that it's important for us to teach our children the Word of God? ¿Cuántos de nosotros creemos que es importante enseñarle la Palabra de Dios a nuestros niños? Amen. Because we are to raise them in the ways of the Lord. Amen. With so much craziness happening around right now, with so many things happening around this life right now, it's important for us to show our kids the importance of to, to follow the Lord. Amen. All right, let us pray for this uh, tithe and offerings. And I'm going to have Vanessa bless this tithe and offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for everything you've done for us. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for bringing everybody today for church. And... Um, Bless everybody who was able to give today and everybody who was unable to give today. Um, everything is for you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Guess what time it is, guys? It is children's uh, children's story. 
So can I have all the children come up here and sit up here at this uh, front section? <laughs> all right. You might want to help her with us. I think she's a little shy. Okay, she's a little shy. It's okay. It's okay. All right. And you might want to come up here and uh, do you need a mic or you're good? Okay. All right. Okay. So this story is called A Loving Father and it's based off of Luke 15, uh, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Okay. So how many of y'all like to go do fun things? Be like, like I saw a little Spider-Man toy you had, huh? You had that? Yeah, so you like all the toys and stuff you can get, right? I have so, Spider-Man. You have Spider-Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man's cool. Okay, and so there's this, um, there's a, so this is Jesus telling this story. So this is a father and a son. And the father owned a big farm, and the big farm had lots of brothers, lots of crops, and a tradition in this farm between the father and the son is that whenever the father either passes away or the son asks, they can get their money that they earn from uh, working and they can, uh, that's just how they get their money. And so the son said, Father, I want to run my own life. Give me my share of the money. I don't want to wait for you to die. I just want my money right now. And so the father said, if you want the money, you may have it. I'll divide it between you and your brothers. And so the son takes the money that he gets and he goes into the big city. He leaves his family. And so he just goes and gets all the stuff he wants. So you get all the Spider-Man toys you want and you get all the bikes and all the toys, everything that you think you want, right? So that's what he does. And so he goes and parties in the city. He just spends money, spends money, spends money. He buys people drinks. He buys people, he buys, uh, he goes and gambles. Gambling is bad, but people love to do it. <laughs> So um, so he made lots of friends because lots of people want to be your friend if you have money. That's, that's how it was. <laughs> so <laughs> lots of people wanted to be his friend because he had lots of money and he was throwing it around. And he bought a big house for all of his friends to live in. So like, you know, the big, big playhouses that people have? Like he had one of those and he would just let all of his friends come in and bring all their toys and stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> he was having so much fun. And so his friends, of course, went with him because he had money. But soon, he spent all of his money. He didn't have any more money because he'd just thrown it and thrown it and thrown it and didn't do anything uh, to save it. So he became very poor to the point where he couldn't afford food. So he was unable to eat. And he had to get a job as a person who would uh, feed pigs. And so the pigs... He was so hungry that he, because he wasn't able to afford food, so he was eating the food. He was getting ready to eat the food that the pigs were eating. Could you imagine how nasty that would be? All the food that the pigs were eating? That wouldn't be good, huh? You wouldn't want to eat that. And so the son decides, my father feeds his servants better than he's been, I'm being fed right now, so I have an idea. I'll go back to my father, and I will ask to be a servant. I won't ask to be his son again because I lost that right, but I'll ask to be a servant. And so he goes back to his father and asks, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am not worthy to, your, to be your son. But his father, he, he grows in excitement. He says, bring me my best robes in the house. Prepare a feast. My son was lost, but now he is found. And so the, the son returned, and you would expect the father to be mad, right? You'd expect the father, like, you left, you took the money, you spent it all, you're so irresponsible. You would think that's what he'd say. But no, he got excited that his son was back home. And so all the other brothers that had stayed, they were working hard because they had lost a person to work with them. So they had to do twice as much work. And so the older brother was angry. He was like, he left and now we have to work. We have to work really hard to put up with the, what he was supposed to be doing. But then he heard news that his brother was home and his father was throwing him a feast. He was like, why is father throwing him a feast when he left? He should be mad at him. And so the, father, the older brother went to the father and said, I have always obeyed everything you wanted me to do, and you've never let me have a party with my friends. But for him, you throw the greatest feast. 
And the father said, Everything I have is yours, but we have to celebrate. Your brother was the same as dead, but now he's alive. And so this story, this story is saying that God is like the father in the story. And so Jesus told the story to everybody and they understood. So but so what the story is saying is that we need to um, even though we may stray away from God, we may go and do all kinds of bad things, God will always welcome, welcome, us, up, welcome us back with open, happy hands. Okay? okay? That's it. Sorry. Everybody want to get around so we can pray? Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us all together today for our children's story. And it's amazing learning about your word and everything you will do for us. I hope you have, uh, all of us have a great day today so we can learn more about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. At this time, um, we have children's church downstairs. So follow Vanessa, all the children follow Vanessa. And she has prizes and activities. And she's also going to have children's church with you guys. God is amazing. Brother Carlos, I see you got a, 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 a nice fade going on right there, man. Nice haircut. <laughs> Put you on the spot, man. All right. God is amazing. ¿Cuánto de nosotros estamos contentos de estar aquí en la, en la casa de Dios? Amen. Happy to be here in the house of the Lord. We're going to try to do this service bilingual, so you guys pray for me, all right? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit be with me and guide me in the words that I say and the message that I present today, that it may be guided by your words, Lord. And we ask that, uh, that you remove any evil spirit trying to harm us from this place, Lord. Any evil spirit trying to distract us from this place, Lord. We invite your Holy Spirit and your angels and your presence, Lord, to help us understand what you have for us, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My sermon title today is called, Let the Music Play. El sermón que voy a tener hoy se titula Hay que dejar la música tocar. Amen. Brother, I thought I was going to want this up, but I'm going to go ahead and shut it down because a little bit distracting. All right. Let the music play. Amen. Sometimes too much technology is not good, right? <laughs> when you stick to the basics of what God has for us, and that is the word of God. Amen. Let the music play. Hay que dejar la música tocar. Music has power. How many of y'all believe music has power? La música es poderosa, ¿verdad? What is your favorite Christian song? Go ahead and shout it out. What's your favorite Christian song? At the cross. At the cross. Anybody else? ¿Cuál es tu música favorita cristiana? Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Any of y'all, any other ones? Muchas, verdad? Muchas. Okay. I, I like a lot of Christian music. I like all styles. I like Christian hip hop. I like uh, praise and worship. I like um, Spanish, musica cristiana. All kinds of, of Christian music. Amen. Um, I know there's so many different styles out there. Everybody has their favorites, right? And it, it, it helps you, right? It inspires you. Te inspira, ¿verdad? A adorar a Dios. It inspires us to praise God with all our heart. What is your, um, what is your favorite secular song? ¿Cuál es tu música favorita secular? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, man. I like Spanish music. A mí me gustan los Tigres del Norte, uh, los uh, Tupac. 
Tupac? You said Tupac. <laughs> all right. And we're going to cover all these things here. Um, I don't know if y'all caught the, the sermon title about uh, Christian music and secular music. What does the Bible have to say about music? What does the Bible have to say about Christian music and secular music? Any, anybody else favorite Christian song or favorite secular song? I know my wife likes Prince, right? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Prince. Uh, I'll admit I like Prince too. <laughs> I, I like Prince so much that my first vehicle, it was, a, it was a small truck, I painted it purple. I sure did. <laughs> All right. All right, um, everything has music. Everything that we think about has music. Todo tiene música. Whether it's movies or commercials, right? Movies have to have music to make it a good movie, right? Las películas tienen que tener música para que sea una película suave. ¿Verdad? Chida. Se dice chida, ¿verdad? <laughs> the movies have to have music. The commercials have to have a little music to it, right? Whether it's a sound effect or, or some music in the background. That's what makes a commercial great, right? That's what catches your attention. That's what makes you want to watch it more or laugh at it or, or just enjoy it, right? So music is powerful. If we stop and think about it, what if we didn't have music? What if we didn't have music? We live today and we didn't have music around us. Que si no tuviéramos música hoy. Si tuviéramos todo lo que tenemos, pero no música. De, de cualquier clase, nada de música. Y ¿Se pueden imaginar qué clase de vida fuera? Can y'all imagine what kind of life it would be? Yes. What about music for special events? A quinceanera, a wedding. Uh, a get together, a cookout. Que la música para un, un evento especial. What about it? Amen? What about music for church? Church service. What about music to praise God? Música para adorar a Dios. ¿Se pueden imaginar si no tuvieron esa música? Can you imagine if we didn't have music to praise God? Next time, next time, imagine this. When you're watching a dramatic movie or a commercial, turn the volume all the way down and see if it's still as exciting as it looks. Or imagine, imagine the movie or the, or the commercial without the music in the background. Just imagine it. Imagine watching a novela and there's no dramatic sounds in the background. There's no music, da, da, da. <laughs> right? And you're watching it, and it just doesn't have that. It's like, wow, this is kind of weird. I tell, I, I give my, my brother-in-law, hopefully he's watching, I give my brother-in-law a hard time because um, I go, that commercial was only good, or that movie was only good because of the background music. I go, picture it without the background music. Or I tell him about the... Um, I'll tell them about the cooking shows, you know, the reality shows, when you're watching a cooking show and it has the music on the background and it gets all intense. Can you imagine it without that music? It would look silly, right? Si lo pudiéramos imaginar las películas y los comerciales sin la música atrás de eso. Imagínese que, con qué ridículo se mirara, ¿verdad? No más fueran palabras. Como estamos hablando hoy. Right? Somebody's having a great time downstairs. <laughs> All right. Can you, can you work out without music? How many of y'all like to work out? <laughs> Not many hands up, right? <laughs> I like to... <laughs> I'll raise my hands. ¿Cuáles de ustedes les gusta hacer ejercicios? Imagínense hacer ejercicios sin música. Imagine doing, working out without music. When you hear that Rocky, uh, that Rocky uh, song, it gets you pumped up, right? 
it gets us pumped up and we want to we wanna work out, we think we can run 10 miles, <laughs> we think we can go lift up a car, <laughs> we, think <we're> the <laughs> we think we're the best boxer or UFC fighter, right? That music motivates people, right? Music motivates us. La música dos, dos uh, empuja a ser mejor, ¿verdad? God gives us many gifts in life. Dios nos da muchos regalos en la vida. God gives us many uh, gifts in life. He gives us laughter. Dios nos da, uh, para reírse, ¿verdad? Nos da el regalo de laughter, the gift of laughter. It's fun to be around and sometimes even pick on each other and, you know, joke on each other as long as it's clean, right? You know, we, God gives us the gift of laughter. It says that laughter is the gift, it's like a gift, like medicine. It does us good to our body. In the book of Proverbs, it tells us that when we laugh, when we have joy, it brings healing to our body. So it's important for us to have laughter, right? Es importante de reírse y gozarse. Porque nos da, dice que nos sana nuestro corazón. It heals our heart. It heals our body and soul. What about dancing? Uh-oh. Can I speak on that? Dios nos da el regalo de bailar. God gives us the gift of dancing. In the Bible, people dance before the Lord. Amen? In the Bible, people danced before the Lord. What about romantic dancing? I'll cover that here in a minute. Pero habla la, la palabra de Dios sobre bailar con tu pareja. Ahorita vamos a leer eso. God gives us the gift of laughter, the gift of dancing. God also gives us nature, right? The Bible, in the book of Psalms, it tells us that when we look at nature, we look at the artwork of God. So next time you're in a hurry, you're in a hurry to do your everyday things, right? Pause for a minute. Pause for a minute and look at nature. Nature will tell you there's a creator. La naturaleza te va a decir que hay un Dios, hay un Creador. Amen? So God gives us laughter. God gives us dancing. God gives us nature. Amen? If you were, if somebody said, hey, uh, I just bought you a new car. You don't have to pay me nothing. I bought it for you. I just saw on the news, uh, I think the day before yesterday, somebody here in Amarillo that works at one of the restaurants over here on the boulevard. McDonald's? Yes. Uh, she was a manager right there, right? They came and surprised her and gave her, gave her a brand new car. Oh, cool. Amen. Or he's going to be like, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, you're going to be excited, right? You might even do a little dancing, right? I'm doing my breakdance skills, but I don't want to show off for y'all right now. <laughs> But uh, you're going to celebrate. You're going to dance. Si alguien te regala un carro, no vas a decir, bueno, gracias, gracias. No, vas a gritar, vas a bailar, vas a enseñar la emoción porque te regalaron ese carro. Amen. When God has given us the best thing, what is that? Life. He has given us grace. God has given you grace. When He gives us grace, we don't deserve to be forgiven. How much have you done in your life to hurt God? A lot. A lot. I don't have to ask you. You know what you've done in your life or what you are doing in your life. God says, come before me and ask him for forgiveness. He will forgive you of all your sins. Amen. He will make you clean. You'll start all over again. Amen. But this time in a relationship with Christ. So when you know He has given you grace, we are to celebrate. We are to be happy Christians. We are to dance. We are to shout. We are to say hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are to be excited for what God has given us. 
And that is his life. He died on the cross for us. Amen? Amen. But out of all those things, and God gives us so many other gifts. Dios nos da más regalos, ¿verdad? But one of the gifts he also gives us is the music, the gift of music. The gift of music. Music is a gift from God. Music doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to who? To God. But who's a thief? Satan is a thief. Dice, Dios dice que la música es un regalo para nosotros. La música no pertenece al diablo. La música pertenece a Dios. Pero ¿quién es un uh, ladrón? El diablo. El diablo quiere robar lo que pertenece a Dios. The devil wants to steal what belongs to God. So originally, music belongs to God. And God gave it to us as a gift. But then there's, a, there's that thief, right? Satanás. Any, any of y'all can play an instrument in here? Piano, drums, guitar, accordion, violin, tambourine? You can play an instrument, brother? Trumpet. Trumpet. Oh, yes. Clarinet over here. Abel? French horn. French horn? Cool. Can you play an instrument? No? Used to? What, what did you used to play? The violin. All right. She still has it. Yeah. Carlos says she still has it. <laughs> oh, JC, the flute. Awesome. I, uh, back when I was in uh, elementary, when I had just came from Mexico, <laughs> um, I, I was playing the, the cello. I think it's a cello. What's the one, that big thing you stand up? I think so, yes. I tried it, I played it, I think I did pretty good, but I don't remember how to play it at all anymore. But my favorite instrument is the accordion, because I love Spanish music. A mí me gusta la música mexicana, tejana, duranguense, uh, all those styles. <laughs> I like all those styles. I love music. I really like music a lot. And it's crazy because I cannot play any instrument, but I like all styles of music. God is awesome. How many of y'all here can sing? <laughs> I've heard my wife sing. She says she can't sing, but I know she can. I know uh, um, Reina back there, she can sing. And then our daughter Vanessa. Anybody else in here know how to sing? ¿Alguien de ustedes canta? No? <laughs> en la casa, dice. <laughs> Amen. What is your favorite genre of music? ¿Qué es tu música favorita? Is it country? We are from Texas, so I think most of us should like country, right? She's shaking her head and saying no. What about uh, Mexican music? I like the romantic music. Romantic music. What about Mexican music or Tejano music? It depends. What about uh, rock music? <laughs> what about rap or hip hop? There's easy listening. There's so many different styles of music, right? Hay muchos tipos de, de clases de música, whether it's secular or Christian, all right? And we're going to get to that here in a minute. Right now, you might be thinking, Pastor uh, Flaco, are you saying that we should listen to all this music? I'll get to that here in a minute. The Bible has all the answers for us. We are to be Christians of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? I say this every Sabbath. I say this every Saturday. We are Christians and followers of what God has for us in this Bible. In these last days, Christian churches are not using the Bible anymore. Rather, they're just allowing what their emotions tell them to follow. And we are to follow what the Word of God has for us. Amen? I like it all. I like all the different styles of music. I, I really do. I really do. I used to listen to heavy metal. Then I went to rock. I went to hip hop. I went to Spanish, Tejano, uh, country, a little bit of country, not too much. Um, 
all kinds of music, oldies. I like oldies. Cruising in the Lowrider, listening to oldies. Me gusta todos tipos de música. Whatever God has, the devil imitates. Let me repeat that. Whatever God has for us, whatever truth God has, the devil will imitate. Lo que Dios tiene para nosotros, las verdades que Dios tiene en la Biblia, el diablo lo imita. Lo imi ¿Cómo se dice? Lo imita. The devil will imitate it. The devil takes what's clean and makes it dirty. The devil takes what's pure and makes it nasty. Right? And that's what the devil is trying to do with music today. That's what the devil is doing with music today. Es lo que está haciendo el diablo hoy con la música. Está robándose algo que pertenece a Dios y lo está haciendo impuro. Sucio. The devil is taking what belongs to God and what he has for us and he's making it unpure and dirty. Amen? Amen? Music is powerful. Did John know the Bible doesn't say thou shalt only listen to Christian music and not secular music? Is that in the Bible? No. The Bible doesn't say thou shalt only listen to Christian music and not secular music. What does the Bible say? ¿Qué nos dice la palabra de Dios? There was music for different occasions. Did y'all know that? There was different. There was music for different occasions in the Bible. Había música para dif diferentes ocasiones en la palabra de Dios. There was music to praise God. And that's what we did this morning. Amen? Había música para adorar a Dios. Y es lo que hicimos esta mañana. There's music that inspires you. It don't have to be praise and worship song. It can be a music that inspires you. Whether it's Christian or secular. Hay música que los inspira. No tiene que ser música cristiana ni secular. No más hay música que los inspira. It inspires us. Amen? There was music for battle. Había música para cuando iba a haber guerra. There was music for battle and they would play the certain trumpets a certain way, right? And they knew they were going to go into battle. Había música para la guerra y tocaban la música en ese estilo para ir a la guerra. There was music to relax to and just hang out. Había música para más relajarte y más estar entre amigos. There was different types of music. There was music to dance to. Había música para bailar. Can you imagine you are now a Christian and you, you're, uh, you're dating somebody? You're dating somebody, you're a Christian, you gave your life to God, you were baptized, right? And you're getting married, and uh, well, you know what? We're getting married. Uh, we gotta have a special song to dance to. Uh, what hymn should we dance to? <laughs> what uh, what hymn should we dance to? Imagínate que tú te vas a casar con alguien y eres cristiano y dice vamos a tener una boda. Pero qué canción le haremos de bailar? Una, una canción de un himno? ¿Le haremos bailar un himno? Of course not. As a deer. No. <laughs> Can you imagine dancing to Amazing Grace with your partner? That wouldn't be right, right? That wouldn't be right. There's appropriate music for certain occasions. Hay música para diferentes ocasiones. The question that the question is: Is it clean? Or not clean. The question is: Is it pure or unpure? La pregunta es: Es limpio o sucio? Amen. That's the question. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's let the Word of God speak to us and tell us about music. Amen. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel 28. 
The book of Ezekiel 28. I knew I forgot to do something. I usually mark my Bible, but I didn't mark it this time. Ezekiel 28. All right. Ezekiel 28, 13 through 14. Ezekiel 28, 13 al 14. Ezekiel 28, 13 and 14 says... And this is talking about Lucifer. This is talking about before Lucifer sinned. You were in the Eden of the Garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, the emerald with gold. And the workmen of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. And then verse 14, you were the anointed cherub who covers, and I establish you. You were the you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Amen. Amen. This is talking about Lucifer. He's a cherub angel. The day that God made Lucifer, he had him in charge of music. God made Lucifer, this angel, in charge of music. Lucifer was the master musician. He was to bring music to praise the Lord. Amen? He was to get the crowds to worship and praise the Lord. Amen? Amen? He was the master musician. He knows everything that has to do with music. Lucifer sabe todo lo que necesita saber sobre la música. Lucifer era el encargado de la música en el cielo. So Lucifer sabe todo lo que pertenece en la música. Lucifer knows everything that has to do with music. Amen. Amen? He was the master musician. When we are joyful, we sing and we dance. Amen? For either praising God or simple things that we're excited about. Amen? Music was supposed to be meant for joy. Whether it was to praise God or just be joyful. Amen? That's what music was intended for. When God gave Lucifer permission to be in charge of music... That's what it was intended for. For us to praise God and for us to be joyful. Are you joyful when you dance with your partner? Of course. As long as the music's clean, right? Because you're showing love and affection to each other. Back in the Bible days, well, I'll get back to, I'll get back to that one in a minute. Let's go to the book of Psalms 95 verse 1. Psalms 95 verse 1. Vamos al libro de Salmos 95, verso 1. Psalms 95, verse 1. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Amen? Here we praise God. En el libro de Salmos, aquí adoramos a Dios. Alabamos a Dios, ¿verdad? En el libro de, de uh, Salmo 95.1 dice que adoramos y alabamos a Dios. In Psalms 95 verse 1 it says that we praise God. That's what we do with music. Amen. When you're going through things, stop what you're doing. And guess what? Praise God. He's going to change <clears throat> that sadness. He's going to change that depression. Whatever things you're doing, you're facing, just praise God. Sing to God. Alaba a Dios, and He will remove all those things from you. We are to praise God, and that's what music's intended for, right? 
What about love songs? <laughs> what about love songs? What does the Bible say about love songs? Well, let's go to the Song of Solomon. Solomon had songs, and he wrote a whole book about love songs. Let's go to the book of Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 4. All right. Chapter 4, 1 through 3. Libro de Song of Solomon. I don't know how you say that in Spanish. <laughs> Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Salomón. El canto de Salomón. <laughs> All right. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 3 says, This is a love song. Check it out. Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes behind your veil. Your hair is like the flock of goats going down from the mount of Goliath. Your teeth are like a flock of sh uh, shorn sheep, which have come up from the washing. Everyone which bears twins, and none is barren among them. Your lips are like the strand of scarlet, and your mouth is lovely. Your temples behind your veil are like the piece of a pomegranate. And then it goes to, I'll stop right there because it gets a little bit more romantic. <laughs> Here is a romantic love song. So is it wrong for us to listen to a love song? If it's a love, uh, sec secular? Of course not, as long as it's in its proper setting. As long as you are married to that person, right? So if you're listening to a secular song, and it's clean, it's not perverted, it's not a, it's not a pushing, you know, promiscuous lifestyle or whatever it is, right? If you're listening to a love song and it's clean, the lyrics are clean, there's nothing wrong with that. Here's a whole chapter on love songs. Here's a whole book on the Song of Solomon of love songs that he wrote. What does the Bible tell us? Why do we try to follow what popular Christianity tries to tell us, right? What does the Bible tell us? Of course, we should listen more to Christian music, right? What about dancing? Let's go to Luke chapter 15, 22 to 25. Let's go to the book of Luke. Apenas leímos... Una canción romántica a su pareja. So, si estás escuchando una canción romántica a tu pareja, no hay nada de malo con eso. Pero tenemos que saber y entender que la música tiene que ser limpia y apropiada. Amen. The book of Luke, chapter 15, 22 through 25. Luke chapter 15. Twenty-two to twenty-five. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted cow or calf here and kill it, and let us be eat and be merry. Amen? For this my son was dead and now is alive again, and he was lost and now is found, and he began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house, and he heard music and dancing. Amen? Music and dancing. Let's go to verse 32. Is it right that we should 
make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Amen. The father threw a party. He threw a celebration. There was music and dancing because his son was lost and now was found. When somebody gives their life to God, celebrate. Amen. Clean celebration, right? <laughs> no alcohol, no perverted music, no bad music, no get jiggy with it. <laughs> right? We got to be careful. But if the music's clean, if the music's appropriate, celebrate. Right? I think there's what, a disco song called Celebrate? Celebration? Celebration? Yes. We are to celebrate. We are to be excited. There was dancing. There was, there was music. Back in the Bible days, back in the Bible days, people would dance together in groups. Men would hold hands and dance in circles. The women would hold hands and dance in circles. And sometimes, you know, it was it was all like a big dancing. It was innocent dancing. That's what it was. I know in some churches today, they have the, the people up here dance before the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. We are to, as long as it's pure, as long as it's clean, right? There was nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with uh, celebrating and dancing. Amen. Whether it's to praise God. Or just to be joyful and dance. Amen? That's what the Bible tells us here. There was music and dancing. The, the brother or the, the father's son was lost, but it now was found. Amen? He came back. This The story of the prodigal son. En la Biblia bailaban juntos. En la Biblia bailaban los hombres juntos y bailaban en círculos así. Las mujeres también. Pero era un baile inocente. No era un baile sucio. Here's the different ways music is joyful. Whether praising God or listening to a love song or dancing for joy is pure and clean. Let's go back to Lucifer. Who was in charge of the music in heaven? Lucifer, Lucifer was. ¿Quién estaba encargado de la música en el cielo? Satanás. Lucifer. Since Lucifer was in charge of music and now he is an evil angel, guess what he uses many today to deceive? Si el diablo estaba encargado de la música en el cielo, ¿qué crees que es lo que usa hoy para, para, para engañar a la gente? La música, the music. You might say, well, I just listen to it for the beat. or the, or the I like the, the way it sounds. Be careful. Amen. Because, be careful because that's what the devil will use. He knows what style, what style of music hits you. He knows what gets you, whether it's Spanish or hip hop or country, whatever it is. El diablo sabe que estilo de música te gusta. Y va a usar eso para engañarte. O para tratar de engañarte. I don't care. I have made a vow to God. I don't care how good the sound sounds to me. If the lyrics are bad, brother, I switch it or turn it off. It catches my attention. It catches my attention. I, like I'm telling you, I, I DJ. I know I, I've DJ for a long time. And I know every style of song there is out there. And I know what songs really get me going. And I, uh, it was a couple of years ago, right, love? I said, no more. No more. I'm not, any song that has a bad message behind it, I'm getting rid of it. And I did. I got rid of over 2,000 songs. I'm not lying to you. And now when I'm around family and friends, or even when I'm switching through the radio station and a, and a bad song comes on, who am I going to serve? Am I going to serve Lucifer, the devil? Or am I going to serve God? Am I going to be a child of God? 
Am I going to stand up for God and follow Him all the way, right? Music is powerful. You might not be thinking, well, I know I'm listening to this song and I'm not doing those things that the song is telling me to do. You might not be doing them, literally. You might not be sleeping around. You might not be getting drunk. You might not be uh, cursing. You might not be talking about gangs. I mean, like even the gangster movies, they, they, I want to, sometimes I want to go watch them again. Because that's what I was raised around. I like those things. But I have to say, no. You might not be doing those things that the music's telling you to do. But if you're thinking it, the Bible says you're sinning. You might not be doing it literally. But if you're thinking it in your heart, you're sinning before God. Amen? You might not be killing somebody, but when you're watching that movie and saying, kill him, kill him, get back at him, tear him off, cut his head off. Guess what you just did in your heart? You murdered in your heart. That's what the Bible says. If you hate your brother, you've committed murder. The Bible also says, if you look after a woman and you lust after her, you're checking her out, you're undressing her with your eyes. The same thing goes for you women. Women are not much different than men today. Amen. The same thing for you women. You're watching, whether you're watching them in, in, on TV or in person, and you're undressing them with your eyes, or you're thinking all these things, you've committed lust in your heart. Amen. Music is powerful. Music is powerful. It will push you to do some crazy things. Either to do crazy things or think crazy things. We are to stand up for God. Amen? And that's what the devil is doing. That's what the devil is doing. He's trying to deceive people with music. Because he knows every style of music. He was in charge of it in heaven. El diablo estaba encargado de la música. So el diablo te puede pushar a que hagas algo que no quieres hacer. Por la música. Si no, si no lo haces literalmente, lo puedes pensar en tu mente y es pecar. Todavía es pecar. Amen. Back in the Bible times, even in some churches today, people dance in groups. Sometimes men with men and women with women, and of course, husband and wife. But it was all pure dancing. Satan has perverted dancing today. El diablo ha perver pervertido bailar hoy. Twerking and grinding. <laughs> Y'all be laughing out there. Cause I, my wife laughs at me because I have no rhythm, right? <laughs> can, we, can we actually say uh, there's twerking for Jesus? No, right? No. <laughs> No, <laughs> there's no such thing, right? But even if you're dancing with your with your husband or wife, it should be a pure dance, right? Uh, if you're praising the Lord with dancing, should it be a sexual dance? No. When you go to a wedding or a quinceanera, I mean... They're playing a, a clean song, and then all of a sudden they play this hip hop song, and right away, boom, the dance floor is full, right? Huh. Everybody's trying to show their moves. Huh. Everybody's trying to grind and twerk, and uh, all the other names that they have today, I don't even know what they have today. Cuando vas una quinceañera, una quinceañera un baile, verdad? Los diferentes tipos de bailes que hay, que son sexuales. No son buenos. It's not good. God, I mean, the devil has perverted dancing. There's nothing wrong with dancing. There's nothing wrong with uh, listening to clean secular music. Check out the lyrics, right? If you're listening, if you're into the song right there and then you notice it's saying something that goes against God, change it, turn it off, get rid of it. I can't say get rid of your CDs because nobody's into CDs anymore. <laughs> I'm old school, right? 
back in back in the back in my days, I guess um, Christians would. Uh, I remember a group of Christians would get together and say, "I'm a Christian now. I want to follow God all the way." So they would. Uh, they would ask everybody to bring all their uh, secular music and put it in a pile and they would burn it. And then before that, it was cassettes. <laughs> but now, I mean, it's everywhere, right? It's everywhere, so we are to... We can't get rid of it because it's going to be around us all the time. What about uh, when we uh, watch our, our three-year-old or four-year-old dancing to... Uh, a secular song that's sexual and we think it's cute right what are we doing what are we doing to that child right destroying. we're destroying their mind we're teaching them that it's okay to listen to these things music can either be positive or music can be negative we don't want nothing negative there's enough negativity in this world already right People that come in and they're around you that are negative all the time, it gets you down, right? It gets you down. We don't need more negativity. How do we determine whether we listen to the certain song is pure or not? Let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This is how we know whether we should be okay to listen to this song or not. It says, finally, brethren. When it says brethren, it means brothers. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Right? If you're not sure, turn to this Bible verse. If it don't go along with what this, this, this is saying, and this is not just in regards to music, but it's also in regards to movies and shows. Filipians chapter 4, verse 8. Libro de Filipenses 4, versículo 8. Dice, lo que es puro, lo que es limpio, lo que es bueno, lo que es positivo, todo lo que es bueno, hay que seguir esto. Si la música está alienada, al, aligned up, <laughs> my Spanish is going me, leaving me. If it's not aligning uh, up with what this verse is saying, we don't want nothing to do with it. Amen? It's simple. Is the message positive? Is it clean? Or does it curse? Does the music curse? Should we listen to music with if it curses? No. Whether it's in Spanish or English? No. oír música que dice malas palabras? No. Is the, room, is the music promoting cheating, drugs, and drunkenness? Um, there's music even for uh, cheating and, um, what is it called? Uh, pushing drugs, corridos. There's certain corridos that, that push to drug traffic, drug trafficking, right? And for us men, these songs make us feel valuable and important, right? Hay, hay ciertos cantos, ciertos corridos, hay ciertos corridos que nos hacen sentirnos que somos hombres y hay que oír esta música de corridos que promote, uh, que, que, um, que dicen que narcotráficos es algo bueno. Y no es, es algo malo. No, no necesitamos ese estilo de música, amen. Hay música mexicana que no es cristiana, que es positiva. Hay buenos cantos. There's secular Spanish music that's good and, and pure and clean, amen. I have my certain songs that I dedicate to my wife all the time. 
I don't sing them to her because she might not like the song after that. <laughs> but uh, there are certain love songs that I, I, I uh, dedicate to my, my wife, right? And uh, there's some Spanish ones, some English ones, some oldie, was, oldie ones. And then there's my favorite Christian songs. You know, there's praise and worship music, and then there's Christian music. It's different. Some Christian music, you really can't praise God with it. Some Christian music is more of a, is more of a testimony, right? Praise and worship music is directly, directly uh, praising God. Amen? So there's different styles of music. Is the music depressing? Uh-oh. Is the music depressing? It might not be cursing. It might not be talking about drugs. It might not be talking about sex. But, <laughs> is it reminding you of your past relationship? Is it saying, oh, where is she, where is she at? I wonder if she's thinking about me. A veces que la música de, de, deprimida, ¿verdad? Música triste. También es mala. Porque nos recuerda de lo pasado. Y ahora vivimos en el futuro. Hay que seguir a Dios. Amen. We live in the future, right? We live in the present. I'm sorry. We live in the present. Let's follow God and what God has for us in store. We are not to listen to music that depresses us. Or oh, that reminds us of past failures, whether it's a past relationship or, or even somebody passing away. You know, sometimes we hear songs that we want to be depressed. We like to be depressed. Why do we want to be depressed? I'm not saying forget about certain people. I'm just saying, what does God have in store for you right now? We are to be positive. So we don't need any kind of depression music. We don't need tragos y amargos. No, right? Yes, I sang that in church. <laughs> we don't need that music, right? No necesitamos esa música, ¿verdad? Música que es del diablo. ¿Qué, es, qué trae el mensaje en la música? What is the music telling us, right? We need positive music, whether it be secular or Christian, and when we praise God, it needs to be praise music to God. Amen? Amen. Am I saying don't listen to Christian music? Of course not. As Christians, we are Christians. We are followers of Christ. That's what Christian means. The word Christian first appeared after the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible says, now you are Christians. It says that Jewish people began, uh, accepted Christianity. It says that the Greeks accepted Christianity. It says that the Romans, some of the Romans accepted Christianity, right? And so we are followers of Christ. We carry, in, we carry in the name of Christ. So we are Christians. We are Israelites. We are spiritual Jews. Whatever title you want to call yourself. We belong to Christ. Amen. Amen? So, if we're Christians, we should listen more to Christian music. Amen. And less secular music. Amen. If we are followers of God, we should, follow, we should listen more to music that praises God. Amen? Amen. But if you are going to listen to secular music, make sure it's positive. Make sure it's clean. Everyone, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> for y'all that didn't get that one, that's what the commercial says uh, for Air One. <laughs> but uh, no, make sure it's positive and it's clean if you are going to listen to secular music. But I recommend more Christian music. Amen. More Amen. music to praise God. More to lift, to lift your heart. Not lift your heart, more to... Uh, Align you more into the ways of God. Amen. And your life, you're wondering, why is my life keep going in circles? Why do I keep being depressed? Why do I keep going through these messed up relationships? Why, why am I always mad? Why am I always jealous? Why am I always hating everybody? Why do I want revenge? 
Could it be what you're listening to? Could it be what you're watching? I didn't talk about movies or shows. Same effect. Same effect. Did y'all know that the word media comes from the word medium? Medium means witchcraft. Television, the word television comes from telepath, telepathic messages. It does something to your mind. It does something to your body. Television, media, is another word for medium, which meant an evil spirit or a witch. It talks about it in Leviticus. So television, what we watch, is it positive? Is it clean? Or is it promoting all the evil things in life, right? We are, to, we are to guard our heart. We are to guard our mind. Amen? Tenemos que cuidar nuestra mente y nuestro corazón. ¿Qué va a entrar? ¿Qué música va a entrar en nuestro corazón? What are you going to allow to come into your heart? Because your heart is emotional. Have you ever been around somebody who's real emotional? <laughs> you just want to slap them? Is that what you said? <laughs> Strain them? But no, you know, we are to be compassionate. We are to be compassionate for people that are emotional. But you know what? Our hearts are very emotional. And we have to use this to think and make decisions. Not this. Not your heart. Because the Bible says that your heart is desperately wicked and who could know it? That means your emotions can lie to you. Oh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, he beats me up all the time. He he cheats with me. He cheats on me all the time. But he's a hard worker. And my heart's telling me that, that he still loves me. <laughs> That's your heart lying to you. We are to be careful. Sometimes I say, you know, a lot of people will tell you, well, what is your heart telling you? Don't listen to your heart, people. No escuche lo que dice tu corazón, porque tus emociones te pueden engañar. But when you have God in your heart, when you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, in your life, yes, you will have emotions, but you're still going to make your decision with your mind. Make sure your heart is filled with God. Make sure your emotions are aligned with God, not with your own self, right? Remember that uh, Lucifer, how did Lucifer fall? Lucifer, uh, he was very good looking. The Bible says he was very good looking and he looked at himself. That's what the Bible says. I'm not making it up. The Bible says he looked at himself and said, man, I'm good looking. <laughs> and uh, pride came to him. He began to lift himself up. I'm better than you are. That's what the devil did. The other thing was, he decided to covet. Yeah. He decided to covet the position of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was in charge of the angels. Jesus Christ was in charge of heaven, along with the Father, right? And the, Lucifer said, I want what he has. I want to be in charge of the angels. Yeah. I want to be in charge. Even though... Lucifer was the right hand and the favored angel in heaven. He still wanted more. Are we happy with what we have already? Be happy with what the Lord has blessed you with already. Why look to another relationship? Why look for somebody else that, th that you think is going to make you happier? If God brought you who He brought you, that's who God brought you. Amen? Are they going to be perfect? No. But <laughs> we are to uh, pray for that person. We are to follow God. We are to put God first in our lives, right? And God will take care of the, of the rest. Our final Bible verse. Our final Bible verse. El último verso de la Biblia dice en Salmos 150. Salmos 150. The book of Psalms 150. Psalms 150. Psalms 150, 1 through 5. 
Psalms 150, 1 through 5. And we are so thankful that the Lord is doing an awesome job with the kids downstairs. They're having children's church and they're also learning stories from the Bible. Amen. Y'all continue to pray for the kids. Continúen orando por los niños. Están teniendo un servicio uh, abajo. Y, este, y que Dios los está enseñándoles cosas. Amen. Hay que orar por los niños. Let's keep praying for the kids because they are our future. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Psalms 150, verse 1 through 5 says, Praise the Lord in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Right? Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise Him with the loud cymbals. Praise Him with the clashing of cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Is it okay to praise God with drums? Yes. yes. Is it okay to praise God with loud cymbals? Yes. yes. Is it okay to praise God with dancing? Yes. yes. What does the Bible tell us? The Bible has so many awesome things for us. Amen? Amen? Let's not follow the tradition of a church. Instead, let's follow what the Bible has for us. I would love to see one of these days the children dancing up here before the Lord. That'd be awesome. Maybe we can set that up one of these days. God is so awesome. And I just want to give everything I have of myself to Him. And I pray that you do too. I pray that you do too. And uh, we have to, sur I want us to surrender everything, ourselves to God. Amen. Everything that we are, I was raised with so many bad habits. I was raised with some bad things. Amen. And um, it was hard for me to let go of certain things. Era difícil yo dejar ir ciertas cosas en mi vida. Pero Dios dice, si tú me amas, deja ir todo. Yo tengo algo mejor para ti. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, follow me. I have something better for you. Amen? Amen? Did you know? Did you know you're sharing the gospel and without even knowing it when you're listening to a Christian song out in public? Hmm. Have you ever thought about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you thought about that? You might not, you don't even have to say anything. Mm -hmm. You're listening to a Christian song. Like, they're going to look at you. They might not say nothing. But they're going to say, there's something different about this person. You're sharing the gospel with somebody. You don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this message. Lord, bless us as we go our separate ways. And thank you for helping us to cover a little bit on what you have to say about music. I know there's a lot more stories in the Bible. We know of examples of bad dancing. We know that John the Baptist lost his head because there was evil dancing, sexual dancing. And Lord, we don't want nothing to do with that, Lord. We want pure, clean, innocent music, Lord. But, for, but most importantly, Lord, we want to praise you. We want to follow you, Lord, all the way. And we want to be an example for you, Lord. Help us to uh, resist temptation of bad music. And help us to accept what you have for us, Lord. And we know that you will, you will bless us and help us, Lord. We also want to pray for the children as they had their children's uh, church this morning. Thank you for allowing us to do that, Lord. And we want to thank you for this Sabbath day. We want to thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. You are so good to us, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Father, I pray.